Hello, in this video, I'm looking at how we can tart up the default Mega Menus in Beaver Builder. Now, Mega Menus come as part of the Beaver Builder theme, so this is only of value if you're a pro or an agency user who uses the Beaver Builder theme. And if you don't know anything about those, then please go to the link that's below. It'll take you to this knowledge base article where it shows you how to set them up. And this is what they look like, and it's really easy to do. All you need to do is to add a CSS class to your WordPress menu under the CSS classes section and it does the rest and I can show you the default setup because I use these a lot on my demos so here's one and I've arranged this one into three columns and each of these three columns have their own headers now you do need to make this work to have headers but they also give you another class that you can add so you can hide these if you wish and I think these will also go up to six columns wide. This one's five. And as you can see here, that's probably going to be enough at six. So the reason why I started looking into how I can extend this a little bit is that I suggested this to a client. But of course, when they came back, they wanted something a little bit more than what Beaver Builder does by default. They wanted this to go full width and to have a little bit of transparency to see what was below. And they also wanted to add in some contact details. So they needed some HTML and I think we will need to be adding an image to it. So I've been working out how we can do that and I think I've pulled it off. So I've set something up on my experiment setup over here. And as you can see, there we are. We've got it full width and I've got my HTML showing here. Now the HTML side of it was quite easy and I'm gonna start with that first because it's a case of adding a bit of PHP to your Beaver Builder child theme under functions PHP. Now all of this code is here in the blog post that's going with this. So it's all there for you to copy and paste into your theme along with the CSS. But let me also mention here, David Woodthorpe, who when these first came out, when Mega Menus first came out, he wrote this article here, which covers some of what I'm doing here. As you can see, he's got it in effect here. He's got some descriptions showing over here, and he's also using font awesome icons over here, which also built into the Beaver Builder theme. And I'm just gonna suggest the same as what he suggested in his article here. He adds a piece of code here, and it's a, a fairly, I think, standard piece of code that allows you to add descriptions to your menu items. And that's all that we're really doing here. The only difference is on my blog post is that I wanted to add to that. So I've got the same piece of code, but in addition to that, I've added this section here, which you can add in, and that allows HTML to show in the description areas. So it stops it from removing and stripping out the HTML tag. So it means that you can add it in whatever HTML you like, and you can add in your own custom classes attached to those. And I've also added one more thing, that, but I don't particularly recommend it. I've allowed it so it can show short codes as well. So in effect, you could take your Beaver Builder safe templates and display those with a Beaver Builder short code in the menus. The reason why I don't suggest you do it is because the nav area is a complex CSS area with lots of things going on. So if you try and display complex templates there, it's likely that there'll be misalignments. Now it'll work fine if you were using say a simple text module or photo module, but if you're gonna do that, well, you might as well do it with HTML rather than use a template because a template is more heavy. It takes more calls to the database. So it's, it's more strain on the server. So generally I wouldn't recommend it, but if you think of a reason why you might need it, it's there, there's the bit of code you can add as well. So that pretty much covers the HTML side. Let me just show you it in the back end. So let's go to the menu here. So I'm in appearance under the menus here. Oh, I better just mention, if you do add it, make sure that you've got your description turned on over here, as well as if you're setting up the mega menu, you'll may need to make sure that this CSS classes is also turned on, which I needed to do so I could add this mega menu, which is the class that they give you to set up the mega menu. But anyway, let's just move on to the section where I've added, there we are, that's where I've added some HTML there. And in the next section here, I've 
added an image and I've been pretty lazy and you can do the same if you're not good with HTML you can just go into your page builder open up a text module and if you want to pull in an image you could pull it in through that way and then go to the text side of it and copy and paste it and paste it into there if you can't be bothered to write or don't know how to write the HTML so that's that that's pretty much it now let's go on to what was my biggest challenge with this and that was the full width here now Technically, it's not possible. I did throw this open to the Beaver Builder team and uh, they were able to sort of stretch it out so it's full width, but it wouldn't contain this in the middle. But then I had an idea a few days ago that we could use a CSS pseudo elements to add on this. So effectively, it's not genuine full width. It's mock. It's a CSS hack, if you like. So I'm just going to explain what I've done here. So I will go over to my CSS editor where I've got it set up already. Let's just get into a right display here. And it's a short bit of code, but I've got a lot more. Let's just go to it. So I wrap this up in a media query because I only want it affecting those sizes above mobile. So if you've messed around with your mobile settings uh, and the Beaver Builder theme, then you'll need to adjust this. But this is the standard. So let's just open up the, the thing that we actually need whoops let's just get to that that's it okay so this is the section and you'll see it in my blog post that actually makes it go full width so as i say we're using a pseudo element to add something that doesn't exist in the html so we are adding content if you like that doesn't exist and i've displayed this as a block and then i'm using this translate to scale up this piece of content and I'm using this width here, which is set to the viewport width of 100%. So that's effectively what's happening. So it means that it stretches out however far wide you go with your display. And I should mention also that the CSS will work on all modern browsers. So there shouldn't be any issue with that, but it is a bit of a hack. And as you can see, I put this Z index, which is where it places it. So it's just under effectively the actual menu itself. Now the rest here is just a bit of styling uh, that I've added, but in fact that the piece of code that's above it here is the default styling that comes with the Beaver Builder Mega Menu that I've removed. And there's a couple of reasons for this is because one, if you're familiar with the Mega Menu, you'll know that it adds a little border top here, which would have been yellow in my case, because that's my active color. Uh, but it will only go the length of the actual menu in this case. So I needed to do a bit more adjustment to make it stretch across the other sides. I mean, not impossible to do, but what I decided that I didn't want that anyway. So I removed it and removed the border from there. I also removed the background. Now, the reason for that is because if you remember, my client wants this to be transparent. So I wanted to remove the default background and also that border. And what I've done below here is I've added them back to my own styling. So my border top is that gray, as you can see here one pixel and i've added some box shadow as well which was already included and that box shadow is you might just be able to see it on the video here but it looks like this is raised because it's just slightly darker under there i can't point at it obviously because i lose it but that's what that's doing and the background color i've added here but as you can see here this is how i can make this to go opacity so if i just change this down and hover over now see i've got the opacity effect that my client is going to want so that's pretty much that. Now, there's just one other thing that I need to cover here, and that's the mobile sizes, because I didn't want. And now this is something I'll be probably revisiting because there's quite a few things I want to do when it comes to mobile menus here. But obviously, I didn't want all of those images showing all those headers. So what I've done is a simple thing here is that I've added again in the media query. So below that width here where the mobile menu kicks in, I've put a display none and added my own custom class here, which is mobile-nav-header. And I needed to then add this to the menu items I'm hiding in my menu. So let's just go and pop back and just show you that I've done that. So if we go back to the menus over here and I wanted to hide these. So there we are. I added that class over there to make sure that they weren't going to display when I'm in the mobile view. 
So I think that pretty much covers it. Um, this is not a particularly pretty example here. I'm sure you can think of lots of more inventive things to do with it and make it look really attractive. But I hope that's useful. I'll probably be returning to this because some other things that my client wanted on this and I shall do, I'm sure, other videos on this. But if you've got any questions, then please post them below. If you like this video, please give me a like. And if you didn't like it, then please tell me why you didn't like it. Okay, thanks for listening to me and I'll catch you again. Bye-bye.